folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where this week I'm continuing work on the Wild West boomtown of Calico. In this episode, I'll demonstrate finishing the dirt road surface using sand and grout. We'll build a couple of wooden grade crossings for the railroad tracks and uh, make a good start on all of the retaining walls, foundations, and steps needed for a multi-level town site like this. As you can see here, I've already built one of the uh, wooden grade crossings, and this is just made out of uh, coffee stir sticks and some O scale 1x12s. And now I want to build the other one on this track back here, uh, and I want to have them both done before I finish the road surface with sanded grout because the road surface is actually going to come up on the edge of these grade crossings. So it would make a smooth transition from the road to the grade crossing and over the track. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build that grade crossing right there. Old timey wooden grade crossings like this are, are real easy to build. Um, I'm using some coffee stir sticks here which measure out to about uh, 4 by 12. But between the rails I'm using uh, O scale 1 by 12s and the reason for that the reason I'm using coffee stir sticks all the way across is a clearance. Uh, I don't want to, um, any uh, uh, couplers or anything hanging off the car snagging on these uh, on these pieces of wood here. So I'm using a thinner thinner pieces in between the rails, and I've uh, already stained these and cut them to about a scale 18 feet long. Now you know depending on how wide your road is. You can make them wider than that or narrower, 16, 22, whatever you, whatever you want to do, but this road's about 18 feet wide here, so that's what we're going to do. And I'm just applying a little Eileen's Tacky Glue to the back. I'm just going to glue these in place right on top of the roadbed. Now I've already gone in and moved away, removed any pieces of ballast that might be sticking up in the way. I'm going to start in the middle here and bring this up right to the edge of the molded in spike detail. And I don't want it right up against the rail because that could cause a derailment. But right up against the molded in spike detail gives you enough room for the wheels and everything to clear on there. And the other one by 12 like that. And they should both fit right in between the spikes like that. Then it's a good idea to have a piece of rolling stock like this caboose here. And you can roll back and forth and make sure that uh, nothing is hanging up on the uh, wooden grade crossing. There. Now for the outer boards on the grade crossing, I do exactly the same thing. I've taken a sanding block and uh, beveled the inside edge here so it kind of fits over the molded in spike detail. But you still want to leave a little bit of a gap there for the, uh, the wheels and equipment to clear. Since this grade crossing is on the beginning of a curve in the road, I'm going to offset the boards a little bit, kind of match uh, the way the road curves around here. Let's see what I mean. Put this in. Put that one like that. Put this one like that. While I was working on this grade crossing, I decided that this transition from the road was a little bit too steep. So I went back and dug out some of the roadbed and the and the sculpt mold here and filled in with a little dirt and that's being held in place right now with some uh, some diluted white glue just to ease that transition a little bit more before I come back and finish the road with some sanded grout. So while we wait for that to dry I'm going to start building a retaining wall. The town is going to have a several different retaining walls. One will be here run along this edge, right along Main Street here. 
kind of give definition to the road and the, the board sidewalk that's going to be up here. And there'll be steps and things so people can get up and down, little O-scale people, that is. And um, over here, right next to the railroad tracks, there needs to be a retaining wall holding this embankment up. And, of course, retaining walls come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, stone, uh, wood, piles, you know, all different things. But um, a lot of different things you see in these old mining camps. Um, but this one, since it's right next to the railroad tracks, it made sense, I think, to make it out of railroad ties. So I cut a bunch of 8 by 8s and stained those, and now I'm going to build this retaining wall right along here out of stacked railroad ties, which was, is one of the simplest and most effective uh, retaining walls to build. Can't really just rely on gravity to hold these ties in place so I've got some uh, 3 16 inch doweling that I've uh, cut to size and I've used a razor saw and a hobby knife to add some distress to it and uh, some age and uh, stained them with the same stain and uh, these will represent logs that have been pounded into the ground here to hold this retaining wall in place. up here and there and maybe add some water streaks coming down. These will be real subtle when they're dry but they'll be there. A little bit of variation. Some should be darker than others. And of course down here on the ground it should be darker because wood will wick water up out of the ground. to begin on uh, this retaining wall that uh, runs along Main Street here from basically from the Calico Saloon to about the grade crossing and it's also going to be made of wood but a little bit more lightly built. I'm going to use uh, these uh, 4x12 coffee stir sticks and uh, some 6x6 six by six, six by six timbers for the, uh, for the uprights. <laughs>
Okay, we got the major retaining walls done. And so the next thing I want to do is finish the road. And to do that, <clears throat> I'm going to use a product called the uh, Polyblend Sanded Grout, which I often use for roads and uh, other ground cover. It's a, got a nice texture to it. It's fairly easy to use. Uh, I get the color called sandstone. I get this down at my local home center. And uh, the color, as long as it's kind of neutral, it's not that important because you can tint it later or paint it. So what I'm going to do is just uh, mix up a little bit in a disposable container. And then I've got a couple of brushes that are dedicated to the use of <laughs> sanded grout only. As you can see, it ruins these brushes. But what I use these for is to stipple it on to the road surface after I mix it up. And uh, it destroys the brushes because it's basically concrete. And, uh, but it works uh, pretty well, but you'll see what I mean. Let me go ahead and mix up a batch. The trick is we don't want to put too much water in it. This is basically the consistency you want. You want to be able to see the sand in there. You don't want it so runny that you, you can't see the, the, the texture, but you want it to be uh, liquid enough that you can travel it on and spread it around. So I think I'm going to start up at the top of the hill this time and work my way down. Starting up at the top of the hill, I applied the grout over the sculpt mold road, using my brushes to stipple on a textured surface. The grout is not great for filling gaps, as it tends to shrink and crack, which is why we use the sculpt mold to build and smooth the road in the previous step. The grout is applied no more than a sixteenth of an inch thick, and though it goes on dark when wet, it will dry overnight to a dusty, light tan. Right here we have a spot where two of the different sections of the layout meet up and you might notice this seam running right through here. It goes right through the middle of the road. Uh, up until now I've been very careful not to glue it together or use sculpt -em mold, uh, to sculpt -em mold to bind it together. But now I'm going to use sanded grout right over the top of that because what I found is if I ever have to move these the sanded grout will just break right along that seam and then it's easy to repair later on with a little bit more sanded grout. So it's a good way to hide the connections between different sections of the layout just like this. Once I had the sanded grout stippled on where I wanted it, I used a 3 inch wide paintbrush dipped in water to smooth out the higher spots and rough edges. The wet paintbrush works pretty well for adding uh, tire tracks and ruts into the road, but they're pretty subtle, so I want to make uh, some that are a little bit more pronounced. For that, I'm just going to use a bamboo skewer. It looks of lots of wagon traffic coming into town here. I guess I'm turning this way. Now, these don't have to be perfect, perfectly spaced or anything like that. Just lots of them. And if it gets a little too pronounced, you can go back with the wet paintbrush and smooth it out just a little bit. And then what goes with wagon tracks? horse hooves, right? So I just take a horse figure after I'm done putting the wagon tracks in and just go up just like this, coming and going. I clean them off every once in a while. And then you've got horse tracks. waiting for the grout to dry, I'm kind of figuring out the final locations of a lot of these buildings. Since the Birdcage Theater is the only structure that's even close to finished, 
I'm going to start with that and kind of work my way out in both directions, figuring out where I need to put some retaining walls and steps and things like that. Back over here at my extremely messy workbench, uh, I'm working on some stairs because obviously we're going to need stairs to get from one level to the other in town. And uh, I went ahead and laser cut some, but you could also use a uh, great line makes a nice uh, set of stairs. And there's probably some others available from other manufacturers. Um, but I'm going to use these laser cut ones and uh, put these together. These are out of some nice uh, 1 32nd of an inch thick basswood. So right now I'm measuring uh, how many treads you need and uh, how many steps and, and how high each uh, of these uh, little staircases should be. So I'm gonna put these together, stain them up and um, try them out on the layout. Now for one side of the birdcage theater, I've got this nice uh, hydrocal stone casting that I've already painted with some uh, Krylon camo dark brown, and now I'm just going to use some acrylics to uh, bring out the stones and dry brushing over the top here. I built up the retaining walls and added steps around the birdcage theater, and then uh, glued the board sidewalk into place. Note that the structure itself is not glued into place and can be removed for maintenance and to add details. I finished up all the major steps and retaining walls and then let everything dry overnight. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking. But uh, before we wrap it up for this week, I wanna talk for a minute about the board sidewalks, which are so typical for Western towns like this. Now, in the case of the Birdcage Theater here, you can see that uh, the board sidewalk I've, I've integrated into the layout. And I can get away with that here because this building doesn't have a uh, an awning or a porch or anything that's connected to the sidewalk or the porch. Uh, now, with the Calico Saloon, that's not going to be the case. It has a uh, an overhanging uh, upstairs balcony that comes out with uh, posts going down into the board sidewalk or front porch. So it's much easier to build that all as one complete structure and have the whole thing be removable off the layout. So in some cases, the board sidewalks will be built right onto the layout as uh, part of the scenery. And in other cases, they will be integrated into the structures like the general store and the saloon and some of the other ones up on the hill here. So it's gonna be done on a case by case basis, but once everything is detailed and scenic, you really won't be able to tell one from the other. Now, I intend to continue working on some small uh, retaining walls here and there and other little details using the techniques I've already shown, but I'm afraid we're all out of time for this week. I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in, amigos. Adios for now.